I'm Antonio Sella. In this video, we are going to continue with an example in which we will try to understand the meaning of some acquisition functions in Bayesian optimization. In a previous video, we explained how the example was built and we also discussed the meaning of the probability of improvement. And in here, we will discuss the expected improvement in its interpretation and well, We'll round up by comparing with probability of improvement and also with expected value and the lower confidence bound in minimization. So if we recall, the basic Bayesian optimization methodology is having a prior and perhaps some pre-existing samples. Then we needed to decide which is the most promising sample point. And then we acquire the samples, we update our statistical model and we repeat until some termination criteria is met. The key step is deciding based on some statistical analysis, which is the most promising next sample in order to fulfill my goal. We need to compute something for each candidate X based on mean variance or whatever statistical information about my model. That something is usually called acquisition function or surrogate function and the abscissa x in which the best value of that acquisition function is achieved will be the one to be recommended. Then popular acquisition functions are these ones here. In a previous video, we discussed the meaning of probability of improvement. And in here, we will discuss the meaning of expected improvement. So let us concentrate on defining expected improvement and testing it in our particular example. We had a prior with mean in black, confidence intervals in red, and some greyish example functions from that prior. These realizations must seem sensible to me, so you know that I think that the real experimental function I am trying to optimize is likely to have this kind of shape, this kind of space variations. I can load this prior with actual experiments, and obtain the posterior, I have the posterior mean and posterior 95% confidence bounds. So now I must carry out a statistical analysis to decide which is the most promising abscissa point to try next. Well, that is decided by some acquisition function. This was probability of improvement, which we discussed in the previous video, and then Expected improvement is this stuff, which uses the normal probability density function and the normal cumulative distribution function, which is the integral of this one. I am not going to delve into the details on why this is like this. I want to concentrate on its intuitive meaning, and I leave to you to look into the suitable statistics textbooks to justify these two lines of code. So what does expected improvement mean? If we consider here our vertical axis y, let's say, then we have some possible decisions. And well, in each possible decision, my prediction is a given Gaussian distribution. And the idea is that, OK, my best sample in my historical record may be this thing. So, for instance, let us imagine that I want to buy a plot of land and then I got a firm offer so that I can buy that plot of land by for euros 400,000. So that's why best. And then somebody else announces that he wishes to sell some land. And, you know, I am an expert negotiator, an expert trader, and maybe I can get that land with an expected value of 300,000. That's the mean of the Gaussian, let's say, in which my prior knowledge predicts. But, well, you know, I did not start negotiations. He did not even ask for a price yet. So this is only a speculation. So I may think that my expected improvement is 100K. I may think that, but that is wrong. Well, right or wrong depends on some subtleties that we are going to 
further digress on, in the sense that there are two ways of measuring how much I expect to gain if I don't buy this 400k land and negotiate with this other seller, in the sense that, okay, we have a scenario one, the guy wants 400,000, now he has uh, already somebody else that pays this amount for the land, so if I want to buy at this price, I must buy now. So if I decide to decline the offer and negotiate with the other guys that I expect to get 300k, then, well, depending on the result of my negotiation, if I am here, I lose money. If I am here, I win when comparing to buying now the 400k plot of land. So this is one scenario. And in that case, indeed, my expectation is to get it for 300, but I may get it for less than 100 or more than 100 or even more than 400. I risk something. Then the measure is the expected value of this normal because, you know, my random number may be anywhere in the bell curve. But I may have a second scenario in which the 400k asking price is secure for me. I am the only buyer interested in that land and I secure a contract, an option, so that I can buy at that price, 400k, in any moment in the next six months. Then in that case, my negotiation with the guys in the red Gaussian is less risky in the sense that well, if after asking them which is the price they are going to sell me the land, I am unlucky and they offer me an amount over 400k, no less. Well, then in that case, I get zero loss if that happens because, well, you know, I have this 400k secured. So if you ask 500, then I will not buy your offer. So I have zero loss here. And in here, if I am lucky and I get an offer for less than 300k, then good, I buy that plot of land and tell the other people of the 400k that, you know, forget about me, I am not going to exert my buying option. So in this case, the expected benefit is not 100k. It is more than that because I must delete from my scenario in which I am computing these averages, I must exclude these situations because I will not have any loss there. So the 100k expected benefit was in scenario one when I had to buy this instantly, 400k, it's now or never. But in this second scenario, this pink region counts zero, it does not count negative. So how do we formalize the calculation of this? Well, in a Gaussian process, of course, because we are in that context. I mean, this land acquisition was just a thought experiment. You know, we are with optimization and Gaussian process and the like. So if my thing is Gaussian, then my expected improvement will be well, something related to my density function of my Gaussian, which is my prior knowledge, something like this, you know, there. And then if I am doing average of whatever things that this will be, you know, an integral of this density function multiplied by the thing I am going to carry out the average. Then in a scenario one, 400k, now or never, the price I will negotiate, well, you know, if it is Gaussian, it will be from minus infinity to plus infinity with some probability. Of course, nobody will sell me at a negative price. This is just a thought experiment and approximation. So the Gaussian can take this. And then, of course, if I compute this, then this will be y best minus my mean, which I call m. 
but this is the wrong calculation. I mean, this is correct, but this is not what people in Bayesian optimization call expected improvement. This is what they call expected value, you know, well, the mean. But what people call expected improvement is just thinking in carrying out this integral only up to y best. Why? Because this is in a scenario 2 for 100k secured. And this is what people call expected improvement. Because if I get an offer above y best, I can secure my purchase at the y best price. So it counts zero. Then I do not need to average the benefit I will get loss in this case if I get an offer of 500k or 600k. No problem because then I will secure my 400k. So this piece of the integral, it is what is called expected improvement. This is the good formula. And the thing is that this is the Gaussian and integrating by parts and doing some manipulations, we get this formula. I computed in MATLAB, but the important thing is not the derivation of this formula. It's just understanding why I am integrating only up to here and understanding the difference between the two scenarios. It's now or never, or you have one year to decide. In the first scenario, the correct computation is the expected value, the mean. And in the second scenario, it's more favorable for me. So the expected improvement will be more than 100k. Of course, it will be more profitable for me to get the buy-in option secure for one year than having to decide in the next 10 minutes. So now let us apply that to our particular example of Gaussian process optimization and whatever. Then, well, I have this code and I compute it with the mean and variance at each of the abscissa points I am going to optimize. And this is the plot we are going to analyze. Well, first, I am not plotting the expected improvement, but, you know, the expected buying price, let's say, in the sense that, okay, if my expected improvement is zero, then I buy at Y best, and then this thing is the expected improvement, the difference between Y best and the actual expected value of these transactions in, in which I have my contract secured. Because with that, I can compare the difference between expected value and expected improvement, which are those two scenarios. So the blue thing is the computation with this expected improvement scenario. And of course, it is always better than the mean. And you can see that, for instance, in this region and in this region, when the lower confidence bound is worse than my best offer, then expected improvement is zero. Okay, it will not be zero in MATLAB, it will be 10 to the minus 8, you know, but okay, it's zero in practical terms. If I have an offer for 400,000 and I expect the other owner to ask no less than 1 million, then okay, accept 400,000, you know, then that is the meaning of this region I have encircled here. So only when I have some non-negligible probability of getting a price better than Y best, then this expected improvement stuff has something to tell me. That happens in here and in there indeed. We get the blue thing, which is of course below the black thing, which is the mean. And then now if we compare the result with other heuristic, other acquisition functions, then for instance, this experiment will be the optimum with larger probability of improvement in the sense that, okay, the fraction of the Gaussian that is below Y best is very large. The area of this is 0.8 or 0.9. However, I am sure to improve with 90% probability, but I will improve very little. Then experimenting here will be the best expected value 
in which, okay, if I am unlucky, I lose. For instance, you know, if I think on a clinical trial, and this is a dosage, the probability of improvement heuristic will tell me that, okay, this new dosage will very likely be slightly better than the other dosages you tried. But the expected value heuristics will tell you that this dosage of 1.1, on average, based on my prior, it will be better than your previous trial on average, but it can be worse. You need to decide whether to prescribe a dosage of 1.5 or 1.1. But then, okay, this expected value is, you know, in the clinical trial, but then this science stuff, this here, is indicated by the expected improvement heuristic. What does it mean? If I am in optimization, trying to find the minimum concentration of a given impurity in whatever, then okay, I found this best sample. And if getting a worse experiment cost me nothing, if that means no problem for me, then I would pick the expected improvement acquisition function. For instance, if I am in a clinical trial of a trivial illness or, you know, of, of a cosmetic cream for rejuvenating my, my skin that, well, come on, if you put your cream with a given concentration of whatever almond oil and it does not work so well, well, okay, nothing happens. You know, it, I will recommend in my final conclusions of my trial to put 1.4 almond oil concentration. Well, okay, if we are in that case in which there is no problem in failing and obtaining a worse result, this is the scenario two in which, you know, I have a secured option. Well, in that case, that would be the expected improvement heuristic, the one I would recommend. And in fact, the last heuristic somebody might think in recommending is the lowest confidence bound. This is the most exploratory, the most risky one, you know. The probability of getting below that red dot here is only 2.5%. So, you know, I need to be very lucky because, uh, well, my probability of improvement is 0.6. So 40% of the times I will get a worse result than my historical best. So in this case, this is kind of like buying, you know, a lotto ticket. Okay, I cannot bet my life on it. Because here, you know, only one in a hundred times I will get this value. But, okay, you know, the more risky acquisition function is this lowest confidence bound. But is maybe, you know, the one with higher potential gain. If I am lucky, I can gain a lot. With this, we conclude in this video. We explained what the expected improvement acquisition function means with this land acquisition thought experiment. And then we plotted it. We saw that it is always better than the expected value, but expected improvement and lowest confidence bound are heuristics indicated for problems in which getting a bad sample is not that bad for me in the sense that, okay, I can always present my best one as my final result. But if that is not the case, such as in clinical trials, of serious illnesses, then maybe my dosage recommendation should be aligned with other more conservative exploitatory heuristics. Either the probability of improvement, if failing, means death of my patient, or expected value, in which, you know, failing means economic loss or gain, and, you know, it's the expected mean, the thing that works. Then, okay. These are the different heuristics and interpretations and the exploitation versus exploration and the risk of failure, depending on the problem. Maybe we think that one option is better than another one. Or in many cases, if it is not a life or death experimentation, people just choose randomly one of these four options and press the button and let's see how Bayesian optimization works. Okay, so it's not really that important. But if you want to understand what you are doing, then the considerations we discussed here may be of interest to you. So this is it. We finish here. Thanks for your attention.